Hi guys and welcome back to East Coast Sailing. If you're running out of some day trip ideas for your sailing adventures, don't worry, I've got you covered. We're traveling from Tollsbury to Maylandsea where we're gonna walk to the Crouch Ridge Estate Vineyards to do a little bit of wine tasting. Cheers. You might be tricked into thinking we're tucked away in a quaint rural vineyard in the southwest of France. <coughs> it's actually located in England, Essex in between Maylandsea and Burnham on Crouch. We'll be departing Tollsbury 30 minutes before high water as we're on neap tides and traveling 10 nautical miles to Maylandsea. Embarrassingly, in 10 years of sailing, I've never been to Maylandsea, even though it's on my own doorstep. I have a tendency to sail as far away from my home port as possible, otherwise it doesn't really feel like an adventure only being an hour and a half from home. Like Tollsbury, Maylandsea is also a mud bath. The plan was to anchor off Ozzy Island for the night and then wait for the incoming tide to arrive at Maylandsea at high water. As it's such a short trip, I've got a full crew on board consistent of Chunky Man, my son, myself, Captain Rob, as well as my wife, Frankie. So come and join us as we travel to... I untied the mooring lines and released a varnish from the dock. And with the light push off the mooring, we entered a mirror-like sea. We crawled over the entrance bar with only six foot of water 30 minutes before high tide. We were treated to some unbelievable sunsets over the coming days as we sailed as light turned to dusk. We glided along the calm sea, dimly lit by moonlight as we approached Ozzy Island. in the sails as we approached the anchorage and got ready to drop anchor. With hardly any light pollution and half a moon, the visibility was amazing at night. With a shattered crew on board, I hoisted up the anchor light and got ready to hit the sack. Oh, look, you're snuggy on the boat, hey? We woke to flat calm seas with an old mould and sail barge parked behind us. And the music that came from parting celebrities on Ozzy Island went late into the night and was soon filled by the sound of songbirds. I made some fresh strong coffee on the new Bialetti and it did not disappoint. Everything was a little bit too perfect, that was until Hugo woke up. Whilst we waited for the tide to come in, I changed a couple of the lazy jack lines that were about to snap for some new navy rope, and that completed all the running rigging changes. We got the engine on and pulled up the anchor and made our way over to Malin Sea, which is only a mile from where we anchored. There's a great boy, we're gonna go past it, you yeah. Crossed over from the River Blackwater into Lawling Creek, and just behind this island, I thought was a really good anchorage. It was clear of any obstructions and nice soft mud to land on. I was miles over to the left, but you want to be hugging those yellow marker boys as you approach. I find using Google Maps for the satellite overlay, which shows your position, is a much more accurate way than using your chart plot to find out where the deepest parts of the channel are. Hugo gave the drone a good luck kiss and off it went up into the sky. We stayed at the Blackwater Marina, which was only £20 per night for a 34 foot sailboat, and this would be our home for the night and this was taken six hours later at low water. We began our three mile leisurely walk to the vineyard, but Hugo had other ideas. I love 
Google Maps failed to mention that the route went through farmer's fields with corn as high as our waist. I'm surprised Hugo didn't have concussion after pushing his buggy through all the uneven ground. Google's three mile leisurely walk soon descended into chaos as we oriented four miles in sweltering weather pushing a buggy through B lanes with no footpath. We stumbled across St Andrew's Church just before I died of thirst. We finally arrived at the Crouch Ridge Estate Vineyard standing at the vantage point by the entrance. The gentle hills rolled towards the river Crouch and it made for a dramatic backdrop. Walking along the rows of vines it was hard to believe that this was in England, I'd felt like we'd been teleported to a foreign country. This is a really popular spot so make sure if you do come here to book in advance. We tried to get onto a guided wine tour but they were fully booked but we did manage to get onto a self guided wine tour. I chose the Bronze Plus which gave you 5 different glasses of wine from light to red and all the wines were delicious apart from the Pinot Noir. We also tucked into a lovely anti-pasta board and stretched our legs around the vineyard. I thought the wine tasting offered excellent value for money for the Bronze Plus self-guided wine tour which had 5 glasses of wine came to £30. On top of the wine tasting I also ordered the best bottle of sparkling wine which is called Sparkling Premier Curvy which was delicious. And all of the sparkling wines were much better than some of the champagne I've had from France. We went inside the shop to cool off and waited for the taxi because there was no chance that we were walking back after 4 miles of torture. When Hugo's not shouting Poirby, he can be pretty angelic. Overall I'll give this experience a 9.5 out of 10 and it's signed going to a vineyard off my bucket list. If you want to do more sailing and less walking there are other marina alternatives and I didn't realise how close the vineyard was to the river Crouch. Bridge Marsh Marina is actually the closest marina and it's only a 15 minute walk and less than one mile away. You've also got Burnham Yacht Harbour which has a little bit more going on. And this is some aerial footage taken from when I was flying over the entrance to the River Crouch. We arrived back at the boat at low water so I decided to get the drone out and see if there were any navigational features. The last thing I wanted to do was to run the boat aground trying to leave back to my home port of Tolsbury. You can see all the scars in the mud where boats have dragged their kills straight through the mud. I thought the best course of action was to leave as soon as it got to high tide rather than leave in the morning to ensure I got into port. We untied the boat and pushed off from the dock and started to head home. My intention was to anchor and then arrive back into port in the morning, however we made such good speed we actually managed to get into Tolsbury. I put the navigation lights on and sailed into the night. I waved goodbye to the crew and they went down below for a well deserved rest and took over the night watch. Thanks for watching East Coast Sailing and if you've enjoyed today's episode please leave a comment, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get the latest episodes and join us as I sail a thousand nautical miles solo to the Channel Islands and onto the Silly Isles.